Next up, we have Noshim Hashemi and January AI. Thank you so much for having me. So we are a precision health company working specifically in metabolic health, working specifically with a multitude of wearables and uh, nutritional information. We are an interdisciplinary team of AI scientists, uh, scientists, clinicians, nutritionists, um, and tech, tech people and, and business builders that are really passionate about increasing the world's health span. We want to eradicate um, lifestyle diseases. Certainly we would like to predict them, predict that they're coming on with the use of AI and longitudinal data tracking, um, but also be able to postpone them as much as possible, prevent them, and with those for those who have them, help them manage it. We have a complete solution to support cardiometabolic health. We have two sides to our company, both with their own research team and uh, their own products. One side is an app that pulls um, data from uh, various wearables, combines it with um, very uh, robust nutritional information and predicts glucose. And I will talk more about that in a minute. Um, so it's an AI powered app that works uh, with wearables in metabolic health. The other side of our business is a nutraceutical. It's a three in one supplement of prebiotics, probiotics, and polyphenols that specifically uh, has been created for cardiometabolic health. Our AI journey um, um, has been um, a labor of love. We started um, obviously with a cold, uh, cold, um, cold start with having a cold, uh, uh, you know, cold start to the data data problem. Um, so that was really interesting. We ran a clinical trial for a year and a half, and uh, we were able to collect um, a, a lot of really, really interesting data uh, on a couple of thousand people. Um, they were healthy pre-diabetes and type 2 diabetes populations. And um, what we did is when, when, we, when we first started designing the trial, we were really interested in the interaction of continuous glucose monitors and heart rate monitors and what they could tell us. In fact, we have a paper published in IEEE where um, we train on two devices and then we remove one device, the CGM, and just using heart rate monitors, we can then detect diabetes. Um, so we were very um, keen on the interaction of a um, multitude of data to see what we could learn that we couldn't learn from one device alone. We then wanted to add, uh, we realized that what was really important for metabolic health, besides heart rate and understanding a person's activity, was really what they were ingesting and their food consumption. And food is something people just don't tackle very much. Food is something that most companies and digital health companies have stayed away from. Yes, there's calorie tracking uh, that's been around for quite a few years, but that's really different from uh, the needs of understanding uh, metabolic health. Some people have been tracking carbs specifically because um, of its impact on metabolic response. But we found that really what you wanted to track was glycemic index and glycemic load of foods because often you don't eat carbs alone and not all carbs are created equal and you really want to understand how much protein fat fiber water is present in foods as well so we set out to make food into an assay really make it uh, an input as important as cgm data and heart rate data so we have curated a very large database of food information. This is all your local restaurant menus. This is millions of recipes um, from Yumly and others. And this is um, all, the, all the groceries that are available through USDA in, in the country. So it's quite a robust uh, database of about 20 million foods. Um, and then we have derived nutritional value for the foods that didn't have nutritional value. So if you wanna eat something in your local restaurant, you wanna know its macros, you wanna know its GIGL, we have set out to produce that. It's pretty extraordinary work and our nutritional inference work has IP around it that, we've, uh, that, we've, that, that we have filed. It's uh, come out of years of, um, years of research that we've done in this area and we're very, very proud of it. Um, and then, um, 
uh, we, after running the clinical trial, we were able to associate people's glycemic response to the glycemic load and uh, glycemic index of foods that they were eating. And that led to our uh, prediction model, um, which we presented at the ADA scientific convenings. Um, that original work, which anyone who's interested, I'm happy to share with, uh, predicted glucose 33 hours into the future. It was extraordinary because, um, because it was uh, able to predict many hours into the future. Usually people can predict only half hour. And it was extraordinary because it was trained on food um, and not just um, you know without food, which is what every prediction model out there does. Anyone who's interested, I'm happy to share papers that compare our prediction model to other prediction models and um, why, it's so, uh, why it's so extraordinary. Um, so what can you do with the prediction model? What does it do for you? Well, it helps you really um, practice mindful eating. So we all have many eating decisions every day, um, maybe three to five times a day, we're deciding what to eat. And um, it's for all those people that are interested in wearing a CGM or all those people that are um, that are interested in knowing the impact on their blood sugar, we're able to give you that impact before you eat something, before you eat something, maybe when you're choosing it. So after a period of training, just about four days wearing a CGM, a heart rate monitor and logging your food, we're able to predict your glycemic response to any food in our database. So this means if you are at a grocery store and you're trying to figure out your response to this set of snacks versus that set of snacks, these, these cookies versus those cookies, you can do all of that without having to eat those things. You can also test out quantities. Would I spike if I have one glass of Chardonnay or would it take three glasses of Chardonnay to, 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 um, to spike my blood sugar? You can also um, do counterfactuals, which is something very cool you can do with AI. So you can, you can look at what you ate. Let's say you went to Starbucks and you had um, an almond croissant. You can see what your response to almond croissant was, but you can also see your response to uh, almond croissant if you had only half of it, or if you've had an almond croissant um, or half of an almond croissant, let's say with, um, with, an, with an egg. So it allows people to really um, 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 uh, it really allows people to think mindfully about uh, about the food uh, choices they're making. The other cool thing that we can do um, is um, our food detect detect technology allows us to frictionlessly figure out how much um, how much how much um, fasting people are doing and what their fasting and eating periods are, which is really important. Um, many people know the impact of um, intermittent fasting combined with calorie restriction. It is um, really uh, has shown benefit for insulin sensitivity. And our goal has been uh, to not just, you know, not just give people data, which is the so what, the now what of the data. Great, you ate this, and this is your glucose. Okay, so what? Um, what we do is we actually do something with that data, which is which is one of the things we do is we we watch and baseline a person's natural fasting period now, and we slowly move them to increased fasting periods. We also do this in combination with calorie restriction. If they want to um, take that up, we we dynamically calculate how much calories a person needs for their level of activity. Um, which is more sophisticated than the usual me uh, method of just have 500 um, calorie uh, uh, deficit a day um, type of thing. So the various levers that we have used, um, one is pointing out the spiking foods and giving you alternatives for those spiking foods, calorie restriction that I mentioned, uh, increasing, uh, knowing how much fiber is in your current diet. I mean, this is a this is a really, really big deal. I think the average American is getting 10 to 15 grams of fiber a day. Our ancestors were getting 100 to 150 grams of fiber a day. This is one of the reasons we have mass inflammation in our society today. And we, we see the prevalence of chronic diseases because people are, um, you know, um, it, it's the diet that we, that we keep. Um, activity insights, this is very, very interesting. Um, we, we learned um, when we began our research that your glucose goes down um, dramatically when you, when you start moving. Now it sounds like everyone knows that, which is great. We're very happy about that, but it's an idea that we popularized um, through our research. Um, and what we can do with the AI, which is really cool, is called these counterfactuals. So again, we can see 
the food you ate, but here's the food um, uh, that you had with uh, with also um, with activity. Meaning, um, here's you eating fish and chips. Here's you eating fish and chips with 10 minutes of walking. Again, this is before you even eat the fish and chips. You can get that insight right away. You can get that insight after the fact. You can also get it counterfactually like, you ate fish and chips yesterday, but had you eaten fish and chips and walked 10 minutes, this would have been your curve. So it is really endless in terms of experiential opportunities, uh, experiential uh, educational opportunities. So our results uh, for people with type two diabetes, uh, people uh, essentially, they had a reduction in caloric intake overall, they had a reduction in carbohydrates, they took more fiber, more protein, they lost weight and they improved their time and range. Um, the results were even better with uh, for all users, including prediabetes and healthy users. Um, we've had great evidence of weight loss with our program. So the, the unique thing about um, our AI is that, as I mentioned, it predicts hours into the future. It can um, do so with food, meaning you can give it a food input and say, what if I ate this? Um, it will give you that answer and it can do a prediction well when the cgm is actually removed the cgm does not need to be on you when we do the prediction which is remarkable this massively reduces the cost of ownership it enables intermittent use of cgms and we are able to put cgms now on larger populations of people with type 2 because you can do it very inexpensively i think the payer and employer world are very much in need of a inexpensive way to manage diabetes and to manage chronic care. And most of this care today remains um, very, very expensive because it involves very expensive human human coaching. Um, but marrying this product with, with human coaching is really brilliant and can 10x their productivity. So we have so far been working on a biological model. Um, we are currently working on a behavioral model. Um, which actually predicts the person's next action and can enable just-in-time recommendations to them. I will move quickly. This is our V2 that we're working on right now. We're actually in alpha. It's uh, going to be in beta in a couple of weeks at the end of October. And it has um, uh, some of our great AI highlights. Um, I'm, I'm going fast so we can get to questions. Um, just-in-time food recommendations is something that we're looking forward to bringing out. Um, I want to get to this. I mentioned coaching and marrying our product with coaches. So coaching is fantastic for empathy and for helping with the emotional side of, of, of behavior change. As far as whether oatmeal is good for me or, or should I really have cheesecake or not, the AI can do that. Um, we no longer really need, um, uh, you know, in general, we don't need that kind of um, uh, generic advice, which is, you know, how will I respond to this? We can get very, very personalized answers and, and we can empower coaches with that super personalized answer to bring to people so they can spend the time that they spend with people more on the emotional side and the empathy side and really get that. Um, change engine going. Quickly, I will speak a few minutes about Eden's. I mentioned our ancestral diets. I think um, people know the standard American diet, which is high in sugar, um, fat, uh, red meat, salt, um, has and a lot of packaged foods, um, has left us uh, and our collective, and of course the overuse of antibiotics, has left our collective microbiome in, in dire shape. That is one of the reasons for many of the chronic diseases that we are seeing today. We were very passionate, Mike Snyder and myself, I didn't mention our SAB. We have a very illustrious um, SAB, Mike Snyder, who was presenting yesterday, is chairman of genetics at Stanford University. Um, we have Tracy McLaughlin, who's a professor at Stanford University, and she studied under Jerry Reven, who was father of, he coined the words um, insulin resistance. Um, uh, Dari Muzaffarian, who was Dean of School of Nutrition, um, and Jeff Blumberg. Um, Justin Sonnenberg was a founder of the company, um, and several other most illustrious names in deep learning, including Peter Abiel, Sergey Levine, um, Zico Coulter, Yuri Leskovich. 
we really have an unbelievable SAB and machine learning advisory board. Um, we came to Eden's, uh, our supplement, through a, a rational process, looking at thousands of possibilities of fibers, um, of prebiotics, and uh, choosing top candidates, and then uh, putting them through our own proprietary assays, our own cell-based assay and functional assays, uh, to arrive at these 13 active ingredients that are currently in our product. This is our first uh, product going out. This one is a whole cardiometabolic health. It works on um, uh, blood sugar, satiety, cholesterol, immunity. Um, and uh, we have a family of other products in the works. Satiety is our next individual product that will come out after this product. This is also going public, um, going getting launched now. The results have been really outstanding for, for Eden's. Um, um, I'm sorry, I was just quickly checking chat to see if it had anything to do with me. Um, the results have been amazing uh, for Eden's and we're very excited um, to continue to develop this, this, this product. Um, and yes, so it's been uh, it's been shown to improve fasted glucose and improve um, various measures of metabolic health, and we are super excited about that. A quick comparison of Edens to the other products out there: um, it is currently a three-in-one product, but we can easily add protein to it to make it a meal replacement. It can be a full line of cardiometabolic um, uh, supplements, and in the future, it will be integrated, um, both AI and the product will be integrated, which puts us on a fantastic path to personalization and N of one, where we're able to essentially collect phenotype data on how people are doing on, on various products and through repeated testing, um, dial the formulas for them and be able to give them a personalized solution um, for, for this. In summary, I would love for you to remember virtual CGM. Remember, you can wear CGM once and you can build a model and train the AI and then not have to wear it again for a period of time. If you lose weight, if you get COVID, if something happens, it's nice to throw on a CGM again, but it would be by choice. Um, and we extend that educational period um, for you into the future without you having to wear a CGM every 14 days. Let me pause there and turn it over for questions. Thank you. Thank you so much, Nasheen. I think we have time for maybe just one question and looking through the chat, I would dare say the question is, what is available to the consumer right now? Somebody okay. who isn't, who isn't um, a metabolic or a pre-metabolic, pre-diabetic candidate, what could I go buy right now? Indeed, yes. So today, um, right now, today, we're collecting names for our V2. But in by the end of October, you should be able to get access to our V2 product, which is a mobile app. It connects to your Apple Watch and an Abbott CGM, uh, Abbott glu uh, Continuous Glucose Monitor. And as I mentioned, after a period of training, gives you information about any food that you want to eat, anything you can look up um, at the restaurant, at the grocery store. If you're cooking for your family, looking up um, recipes, you can see the impact of foods before you eat them. That's going to change a lot. <laughs> well, thank you so much. It's very exciting technology. It has uh, far reaching implications for behavioral modification. Um, thank you so much thank for the time, Nosheen. Absolutely. Thank you for having me.